Good morning, everybody. Good morning. We're glad that you're with us today on this Lord's Day. Mm -hmm. Amen. We'd like to welcome you to North Greensboro Church of God for our 11 o'clock service this morning. Yes. I hope you've come expecting from the Lord today. Amen. Amen. Let's Amen. go to the Lord in prayer and let's ask God to touch us today. Heavenly Father, we love you. We just thank you, God, for your grace and your mercy. We ask for the anointing of your spirit to be upon this service this morning. We're praying, God, that, Lord, you would meet every need today, Lord. That, God, you would have your will and way, Father, God. Anoint us, God, and touch us at the point of our need today. And for that, Lord, we will give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, and give you the praise. Amen. Amen. Let's worship the Lord as Sister Janie comes to lead us in a couple of songs. And then following her, Sister Jen is going to sing one for us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Trust everybody's feeling well today. And I'm going to go ahead and shoot this message out here. Uh, we have a couple in our congregation uh, that will be celebrating the 70th anniversary on this coming Wednesday. I don't know about you guys, but to me, that is a huge, I mean huge um, milestone uh, being together for 70 years. And uh, Clyde and Opal Coleman, uh, we'll go ahead and wish them a happy anniversary um, and hope you guys have a good and blessed week this week in the Lord. Amen. All right, we're going to sing a hymn and a Christmas carol, but it looks like we're going to sing the Christmas carol first. Is that what we got lined up, brother? Yes. All right, help me sing. Oh, hold on, i got to get my words. Hold on. Sometimes there is a benefit to uh, having a cell phone and getting access to the Internet, especially when you need words to a song. Oh, uh, where did they go? Here they are. All right. Praise the Lord. All right. Go ahead, brother. One of my favorites. Oh, beautiful 
I trust if you know that star of Bethlehem, if you know Jesus Christ is your personal Savior, that you would let your little light shine, as the kids' song says that we all probably learned when we were kids. Uh, let my little light shine, hide it under a bushel. No, I'm going to let it shine. Won't let Satan blow it out. I'm going to let it shine. Anybody remember that song? Amen. All right, help me sing when we all get to heaven. I started to say, I'm not familiar with that one, brother. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for listening. Continue to worship with Sister Jenna. Amen. Lord, touch us today, God. Jesus' name. Thank you, Father God. We love you today. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. He is our cornerstone this morning. Praise yes. God. Yes, yes. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles today, we're going to look Thank at three God. passages of Scripture. First one will be in Malachi chapter 3, verse 6. The second one will be in Hebrews 13, verse 8. And the third one will be in Romans chapter 8, verse 11. So if you would turn with me there, please. We'll start with Malachi chapter 3, verse 6. Let me say it is good to see everyone that's watching online this morning as well as on the conference line. We have several on there. And I hope you've come to receive something from the Lord today. Amen. Let's start with Malachi chapter 3, verse 6. The word of the Lord says the following. For I am the Lord. Right. I change not. Right. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Romans chapter 8 verse 11 says the following. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. I like to preach this morning on this thought. The same God. The same God. God. Father, we love you today. We just yes, praise you. Thank you we Lord. give you glory and honor. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity we have to gather together online and on conference line and even in this house, Lord, with our, our, my family. Yes. I ask God that you would touch us. I pray, Lord, you would strengthen us, encourage us, and for that we will praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. There's one common factor with these three texts this morning. And that's the fact that God does not change. Right. Amen. God does not change. Right. Malachi 3 6 tells us God the Father doesn't change. Right. Hebrews 13 8 tells us God the Son doesn't change. And Romans 8 11 tells us that God the Holy Spirit does not change. These three are one according to 1 John 5 right. verse 7. Yeah. I want you to understand this fact. That since God does not change, He is the God of your yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Hallelujah. Yeah. I like what Dr. French Arrington at the Pentecostal Theological Seminary says. The God of the Bible is one who does not change. This means that God is consistently good. He is consistently faithful to His promises. And He is dependable. God will never be any better than He is now because He is the perfection of goodness. He will never be any holier than He is now because He is the essence of holiness. God's attitude towards sin is the same as if the day He drove Adam and Eve out of the Garden of Eden as God has always been receptive to faith and love. So let's look at this this morning. God the Father has not changed. 
I read in Malachi 3, 6, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore your sons of Jacob are not consumed. God the Father has not changed. Now people have changed. Right. Times have changed. Right. Circumstances definitely has changed. Yeah. But He's still God. Yes. Amen. He's right. still God. The psalmist says it like this in Psalm 90 verse 2, Before the mountains were brought forth, or even thou hast formed the earth in the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Yes, praise the Lord. Psalm 27, But thou art the same, and thy years have, shall have no end. Psalm 103, 17, By the mercy of the Lord is from, but the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him and his righteousness unto the children's children. God spoke in Isaiah and said the following. Isaiah 41 verse 4. Who have wrought and done it, calling generations from the beginning. I the Lord the first and with the last I am He. Isaiah 44 verse 6. Thus saith the Lord the King of Israel and His Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first, I am the last, and beside me there is no God. But the second part of this verse says in Malachi 3, 6, Therefore thou sons of Jacob are not consumed. God has, God has repented or changed his mind when it became necessary because of the free moral agents that we are rebelling to the point of judgment. And this is keeping with his character. He is absolute in holiness and justice. And is morally and divinely obligated for the good of all to judge the few or all if need be, or to show his mercy one to all should they meet the conditions of his mercy. God does not and cannot change his original and eternal plan and purpose, but he can and does change some way of fulfilling that plan. God does not repent of what he has promised. Numbers 23, 19 says, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. He has said and he shall not do it, or he has spoken and shall not make it good. 1 Samuel 15, 29 says, And also the strength of Israel will not lie or repent, for he is not a man that he should not repent. But God finds it necessary to change plans of blessing when men choose to rebel and sin against him. Mm. And it's important that we realize that this morning because a lot of people go around today and they say, oh, God is a God of love. God is a God of mercy. And God is a God of peace. Yes, he is. But let me tell you something. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I've come to tell somebody this morning, just because God is a God of love, doesn't mean He's also a God of judgment. And I feel impressed to the Lord to say this morning, judgment is at the door. Yes, my Lord. Everything we're going through at this point is preparing us for the rapture of the church, but also the tribulation as well. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Deuteronomy 32, 36 says, For the Lord shall judge his people and repent himself for his servants when he seeth that the power is gone and there is none shut up or left. Psalm 135, 14. For the Lord will judge His people, and He will repent Himself concerning the servants. Jeremiah 18, verse 10, if, if it do evil in my sight, and obey not my voice, I will repent the good wherewith I have benefited them. God will change His mind, though, from cursing the blessing when people repent and come back to Him. We see this in Jeremiah 18, verse 8. If that the nation against whom I pronounce turn from their evil, I will repent of the evil that I thought to do unto them. Joel 2, 14. If thou know well that he would return and repent and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and drink offering unto the Lord your God. Amen. Yes. What does that mean for us? 
God will forgive us when we repent. Second uh -huh. right. Chronicles seven fourteen. Much to everybody quoted, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. God will forgive us yes. if we repent. That's why the psalmist David said in Psalm 103 verse 3, when he was blessing the Lord with all his soul and all within him, blessing his holy name, he gets to verse 3. He said, Who forgiveth all thine iniquities and who healeth all thy diseases. God also touches us every day. Lamentations chapter 3, 22 through 23, as though the Lord's mercies we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Yes. But not only has the Father not changed, the Son has not changed. Uh -huh. Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ is the same today and yesterday and forever. Uh -huh. Here we see God's unchanging character. In which is God's son's unchanging character. F.F. F. Bruce says, His help, His grace, His power, His guidance is currently at His people's disposal. Why then should they lose heart? Others serve their generation by the will of God and pass on, but He, because He abided forever, have His priesthood unchangeable. He never needs to be replaced and nothing can be added to his perfect work. Hallelujah. Jesus never needs to be replaced. As our high priest this morning. Uh -huh. You know there's people that have tried to replace him. Oh, yeah. Hello. Right. They tried to replace him with, with um, a God named Allah. They tried to replace him with Buddhism. They tried to replace them with Hinduism. They tried to replace them with all these other religions. But I'm here to tell you this morning, and I say this wholeheartedly, Jesus is not just a way. He is the way. Jesus is not just a truth. He is the truth. Jesus is not just the, a life. He's the life. He said it. John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come unto the Father but by me. And we learned this fact because Jesus was the same yesterday. Hallelujah. We also see in Acts 10, 38, the, the, uh, Luke writes in Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil because God was with him. We also understand in Romans chapter 5, verses 8 and 9, but God commendeth his love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I want you to know something this morning. And while you're still out in sin, he died for you. Right. While you are saved, he died for you. Right. While you are on your way to heaven, he still died for you. Yeah. And he rose again on the third day. Yeah. And he is at the right hand of the Father right now, making intercession for us. Hallelujah. That is why he was the same yesterday. And that's why he's still the same today. Yes, amen. Praise the Lord. He's at the right hand of the Father making intercession for us. The word of the Lord says in, he, in Romans 8, 34, Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died yet, rather than is risen again, who is at the right hand of God, which also maketh intercession for us. Hebrews 7, 25, Wherefore he is also to save him to the uttermost that come to God, by him seeing that he ever liveth to make his intercession for them. And because of that fact, he meets our needs according to his will. Yes. Amen. I was talking with Brother Palmer on the phone before we went on live with the service this morning. Me and him both said we thank the Lord for prayers he did not answer. There's a lot sometimes when we pray, we pray out of 
out of our will instead of God's will. Right, right. Amen. We want we sometimes we want God to be like Burger King and have it our way. Mm -hmm. But you see, it's God's way or no way at all. Right, yeah. It's the Father's way or no way at all. Mm -hmm. He's got a plan and a purpose for each one of us. And it's all working together for His purpose. Hallelujah. Yes, thank you, Lord. First John 5, 14 and 15 says, And this is the confidence we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He heareth us. Mm -hmm. And if we know that He heareth us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions we desire of Him. Jesus even taught it when He was teaching the disciples how to pray. And He set the example by saying, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Right. Give us this day our daily bread. Hallelujah. Right, right. Yes, Lord. When you pray, when you call on God, you've got to ask according to His will. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. right. Yes. Amen. Yes. But we also realize that He's the same forever. Mm -hmm. He's the same forever. Forever. You see, he met all the needs yesterday. I can't tell you time and time again where God miraculously moved and met every need in my life. Yes, thank I'm thankful for those times. Thank you, Lord. You are if time permitted, I would be here all day telling you how God's met the need yesterday. But he also meets our needs today. There may be some of you watching online this morning or will watch the replay on YouTube or will get the CD this week and you're struggling, you're going through things, but I'm here to tell you He will meet your needs today if you will trust in Him. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. And He shall meet all our needs eternally. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ will never fail to meet the single need of the true believer. He met all the needs of the believers who lived yesterday. You don't believe me? Read Hebrews chapter 11. He shall meet, he'll meet the needs of all believers today, and He shall meet the needs of all believers forever. James 1.17 says, Every good and perfect gift is from above and coming down from the Father of lights, who to Him is no variableness, neither the shadow of His turning. Hebrews 13.6 So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Hallelujah. Psalm 28 verse 7. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in Him. And I am helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoiceth. When with song will I praise Him. Hallelujah. Yes, Woo! You. I wish somebody would give God some praise this morning. If you're on the phone, give God some praise. If you're online, give God some praise. If you're here this morning, give God some praise. Let God arise and His enemies be scattered this morning. Hallelujah. Yes, amen. Thank you. He's the same God. He has not changed. But there's one more respect to this. The Holy Spirit has not changed. Romans 8, 11 says, But the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by His Spirit that dwelleth in you. In the Old Testament, we understand that the Holy Spirit was present in creation. He was the same yesterday. Genesis 1-2 says, And the earth was without form and void. Darkness was upon the face deep. And the Spirit of God moved Upon the waters. Job testified of this in Job 33 verse 4. The Spirit of God have made me and the breath of Almighty have given me life. The psalmist testifies of this in Psalm 104 30. Thou sendest forth thy spirit. They are created and thou renewest the face of the earth. Psalm 33 verse 6. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made and hosted them by the breath of his mouth. Which is translated in the Hebrew the Spirit of God. We also understand that the Spirit anointed in the Old Testament. In Genesis 41, 38, we understand that the Spirit anointed Joseph while they were in Egypt. 
In Numbers 27, 18, we understand that the Spirit anointed Joshua. We understand in 1 Samuel 16, 13, that the Spirit anointed David. But I want you to know something. It's just not confined to the Old Testament about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is also found in the New Testament. We understand that He is the convictor of sin according to John 16, verses 7 through 9. It says that He will reprove the world of sin and judgment. Hallelujah. He's also the comforter according to John 14, Verses 16 and 17. And I will pray the Father. And He shall give you another comforter. That He may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth. Whom the world cannot receive. Because it seeth Him not. Neither know Him. But ye know Him. For He dwelleth with you. And shall be in you. Hallelujah. Yes, thank you Lord. And today. He is the inner, he's an intercessor for us in Romans 8, 25 through 27. But if we hope for that we see not, then we have patience, do with patience wait for it. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth in our infirmities. For we know not what we, would pray, what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit Himself makes an intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Mm -hmm. He's the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, the God all three in one. Right. Yes. Hallelujah. I believe Amen. That. So what does this mean for us today? Number one, God is the God of our yesterday. Psalm 124 verses 1 through 8 says, If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel may say, If it had not been for the Lord on our side, when men rose up against us, they had swallowed us up quick, and their wrath is kindled against us. Then the waters have overwhelmed us, the stream have gone over our soul, and the proud waters have gone over our soul. Blessed be the Lord who hath not given us prey to their teeth. Our soul escaped as a bird out of the snare of the flower, flowers. The snare is broken and we are escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Yes. Where would we be this morning if it was not for the Lord that moved in our lives yesterday? Mm -hmm. If He did not save us, if He did not sanctify us, if He did not fill us with His Holy Spirit, where would we be today? But you see, He's not just the God of our yesterday. And I'm here to tell you a lot of people make Him the God of yesterday only. Mm -hmm. But He's also the God of today. Right, yes. right now. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. In the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of everything that's going on around us in this world today, He's still God. Yes, thank you Lord. David said in Psalm 23, The Lord is my shepherd. Present tense, my shepherd. Mm -hmm. I shall not want. Right. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. He's the God of today. He's a right now God. He's an old time God. Yes, He is. He may not come when you want Him, but He's always right on time. I've come to tell you this morning, God will show up in your situation if you put Him as Lord of your life. Glory to God. I wish somebody would give Him praise this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I feel the Holy Ghost this morning. Praise the Lord. Me too, brother. But not only is He the God of today, He's also going to be the God of tomorrow. Right. The old song says many things about tomorrow. I don't understand. But I know who holds tomorrow. Yeah. And I know who holds my hand. Yes. 
Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Paul said it like this in Philippians 3, 13 and 14. Brethren, I count not myself to be apprehended, but this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. He's the God of your tomorrow. Thank you, Lord. If you turn on the news, you may think He's not. If you've had COVID-19, you may think He's not. But He is. Yes. He's the God of your tomorrow. Yes. Thank you, Lord. The problem with a lot of us is we focus too much on the negative news instead of the good news. Well, my Lord. We do. We focus too much on the, on the downside of things instead of keeping looking up because our redemption draweth nigh. I close with this story this morning when Lloyd C. Douglas, the author of the Robe and Other Novels, was a university student. He lived in a boarding house. Downstairs on the first floor was an elderly, retired music teacher who was infirm and unable to leave the apartment. Douglas said that every morning they had a, a routine that they would go through together. He would come down the steps and open the old man's door and ask, Well, what's the good news? The old man would pick up his tuning fork, tap it on the side of the wheelchair and say, that's middle C. It was middle C yesterday. It'll be middle C tomorrow. It'll be middle C a thousand years from now. The tenor upstairs sings flat. The piano across the hall's out of tune. But my friend, that's middle C. The old man had discovered one thing on which he could depend. One constant reality in his life. One still point in a turning world. A cord. But for the Christians, there's still one still point in a turning world. And that one that is absolute of which there is no shadow turning. And that is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm here to tell you, God the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, the three in one, is still the same this morning. Yes, yes. Will you trust Him today? Let's pray together. Father, we love you. We just thank you, God, for this message. We thank you, Lord, for this word. We ask, God, that you would touch us and strengthen us this morning. I thank you, Lord, for this message, God, and the anointing to preach. And I pray this morning, Lord, there's one out there listening that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, that they would repent of their sins, that they would believe on you, that you came to this earth, died and rose again on the third day. And now you're at the right hand of the Father making intercession. That Lord, they would turn their life over to you. And let you be Savior and Lord of their life today. Yes, Lord. Lord, I pray people would receive you today into their heart. As a result of this message. I ask God you would touch each and every one in our church family. And Lord, help us be reminded this week. That you're still the same God. Yes. I pray for healing for Louise Shoup today, God. I pray for healing, God, today for Donnie Duncan. Jesus. I pray for healing today for Linda Wilson. I pray for healing today for Debbie Spall. I pray for healing today for Gail Edwards. I pray for healing today for Mike Ingo, Lord. I pray for healing today for all these, Lord, that have been sick and struggling, Lord. And I ask God that you would touch our church family in a mighty way. In Jesus' name we thank you. Amen. I want to thank you for joining us this morning. I want to encourage you to be back this evening at 5 for our evening service. Lord willing, I will be preaching a message on but blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Let me encourage you also. Normally at this time I would instruct our congregation to leave their tithe and offering in the offering plate as they're leaving. But if you feel led and you want to give to our church, you can do so in one of three ways. You can bring it by the parsonage next door to the church or you can mail it to the church at 3605 Summit Avenue, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27405. Or you can give online through Cash App at the dollar sign NGCOG. 
So remember that today and pray that if the Lord would have you to give, to give. May the Lord bless you today and may he keep you in the palm of his hand. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus as we leave, let the words of our mouth and meditations of our heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength, redeemer, and soon coming king. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen.